What we perceive above the water and what is actually happening under the water are two very different situations. Catching bass has a lot to do with efficiency for both numbers of bass and the size of the bass. Well, today I'm gonna to be focusing on lure efficiency, and our goal is to get as close to 100% efficiency on our presentation and retrieve as we possibly can get. But that's not what always is happening. I'm gonna be talking about three specific types of lures and or presentations today, and that's soft plastics fished on the bottom, drop shot rigs, and deep diving crankbaits. Let's start off with soft plastics fished on the bottom, and that is probably as anglers our biggest misunderstanding or myth of what's really going on. Let's go ahead and start off with the shaky head. This is how we think it looks under the water or how we've been told it looks under the water but this is actually more reality of what's happening now let me say right up front if you're fishing lakes and rivers that have a very clean bottom mainly rock you're going to be in pretty good shape for most of your presentation but if you're fishing anything that has a silty bottom a mucky bottom leaves moss vegetation that's just off the bottom boy this is definitely something you're going to want to take into consideration and another factor of course is water density the colder the water the more dense it is and it's going to push down on our lures differently in the cold water months than it does in July, August, and September. So all of these are factors that play into it. And there's several different ways that we can fix this. First, we can go ahead and use lures on our shaky heads that are either longer or wider. And the reason being is the longer lures are more apt to catch on something and then stand up out of the muck in that silty bottom just like wider lures are. A, a crawdad is a great example to put that on a shaky head. With those appendages sticking off to the side, it's more apt to grab a leaf or a rock or a stick and sit up more like we want it to. If you use a smaller finesse worm, there's a good chance in those types of bottom compositions that are soft, it's gonna fall over and you know not be seen by the bass and not be as efficient as we want it to be now when the fish are really aggressive they will root around and dig out something out of that type of soft bottom composition just like this bass here is doing the next thing that we can do when we are fishing our shaky heads and ned rigs and i mentioned this in my last video as well is change the type of plastic that we're using elastec is much more buoyant so having in your tackle selection traditional plastics and elastec plastics are going to be huge for you to be more efficient in your presentations depending on the bottom composition that you run across now just make sure that you keep them stored separately because the two types of plastics don't get along all that well together Together. And the third thing that you can do for fishing soft plastics on the bottom is if you have not given the Tokyo rig a chance yet, I really think it's something you're going to want to investigate this season. This particular rig excels at keeping that bait up off of that soft bottom out of all the things we talked about i think this option right here is your best choice when you've got that soft bottom composition for getting as close to 100 percent presentation efficiency as you can this is a definite game changer and keeps your lure where it needs to be for a longer percentage of the time for those of you that have used the tokyo rig and had some success go ahead and drop a comment below but you can believe i'm going to be fishing it quite a bit this year the next one i want to talk about is the drop shot rig this is what we think is going on but often this is what is actually happening now to get that lure up in that horizontal plane like we want, there's a few things that you can do. One, you can go ahead and shake the lure just a little bit. When you got that vertical motion to it or you pop it or hop it, the lure obviously fluctuates up and down. So make sure that you're imparting some slight movement to it if you've got a traditional plastic and that will help keep it upright more of the time. Second thing, like we've talked about, is use Elastec. My 
absolute favorite drop shot lures, the Baby Z2. I will link to that down below, but just look at this thing. It is an absolute dynamite drop shot lure, and this is the three and a half inch version just love it and the other thing that you can do is there are several companies out there that offer more stand up type hooks or i should say stand out type hooks and those could be something worth investigating as well but that drop shot's not always doing what we think it's doing and the last one that I want to touch on is deep diving crankbaits. And we as anglers kind of have the misunderstanding that if that lure is in the water, it's working for us. And to some degree that is true. But it is most efficient in doing what it's designed to do when it has actual bottom contact. While in many retrieves, that actual bottom contact when it's digging and doing its thing is a very small percentage of the overall retrieve. It's just not working for us as long as we need it to. So there's a few things we can do with that. One is make really, really long casts. I mean extra long casts. So important. A longer composite crankbait rod is going to help with this. I use seven foot six, seven foot ten. And the composite rod has more parabolic action or slingshot type of whip and can launch those deep divers way, way out there. The next thing we want to do is slow our reeling down. Bring that crankbait a little bit slower. A lot of times we bring that crankbait way too fast or we think if we reel it down quick, it'll get to depth sooner. That's actually doing just the opposite. You want to reel it a little bit slower so it really digs and crawls and it will get to depth quicker than if you reel it too fast. And the third thing we can do to get that deep diver in the zone longer is use a fluorocarbon line because it sinks and try to stick around that 10 pound, 12 pound mark and you will get some more depth out of your crankbait as well. And hey, if you'd like to watch a video that talks about bass migration routes, are they coming shallow, are they coming deep, what are they doing, go ahead and check this one out right here. And hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.